I love meatloaf. I mean, I guess a lot of people don't. I don't know why. It's comfort food to me. So what made mine better is that I use beef and pork. So it makes the texture of the meatloaf better and it, it makes it juicier because that pork's got more fat. And it gives it that flavor. Yeah, and it gives it really good flavor. I think that's a really good idea to combine yeah. those two meats. Welcome to Malcolm Reed's How to Barbecue Right, a podcast where we talk about barbecue, share recipes, and discuss all things delicious. And now here's your host, Malcolm and Rochelle Reed. Hey, welcome back to the How to Barbecue Right podcast. I'm your host, Malcolm Reed, and joined by my lovely, talented wife, Miss Southern Shell. Tyler's over here to, to on the boards, to my left, to your right. <laughs> what up, yeah? <laughs> I don't know what it looks like to people. They don't see. <laughs> we keep trying to get a camera on him, and he yeah. keeps coming up with excuses. Excuses not to put a camera on him? Like, oh, no, Jamie needs a camera now. <laughs> here, like, every now and then. What's going on this week? Um, Last weekend, we attended the Melbourne Burger Cook-Off. Oh, that was a good one. Yeah. So they were raising money. For this church that was built in 1812, I believe the the pastor said, and it's the it's one it's I think he said it was the oldest church west of the Mississippi that's still standing. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And they're kind of outgrowing their space, so they're trying to build. You know, that's it's a small community up there, and you would not think. He said they went from having like twenty twenty regular attendees to church service on Sundays to now they're like almost up to eighty. And that's how big that little community is growing. So that's a good thing. Yeah. But anyway, then they raised some money for it. And we passed out playing. Yeah. We, we, <laughs> the church yeah right I didn't, know, I didn't know if that was really the right move because it was going to be like a, the idea was, and they were asking us, it was like, we want to do something that the local community can feel comfortable competing in. And so they said, what about a burger? And I said, yeah, a burger's fine. Everybody can cook a burger. It's simple enough. It doesn't yeah. take all day to do it. It's a good, you know, good good way to it's a good do equalizer. A contest. You don't have yeah. to be like some super competitive right. professional, yeah. And then I, they were like, "Well, can we do anything else?" I said, "What about a drink contest?" <laughs> and and they were like, "Yeah, yeah, we'll do a drink contest." But they weren't thinking about this is for that church. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't so they, they dropped feel. the drink contest. So they dropped the drink. We didn't drop the Bloody Marys. You know? <laughs> yeah, so we just uh, kind of ran the hospitality mobile. Yeah. We, we we got the side by side and loaded the back end up with big batches of Bloody Marys and snacks and drinks and juice boxes for the kiddos and I, had a big time. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, I like uh, weather was amazing. Yeah, I like doing the hospitality mode better than competing. Heck yeah, it's fun because you just ride around, give out stuff, talk to people, give them rides to turn in. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I did. I just rode. I just shuttled people around. I was running the shuttle. Everybody's happy to see you. Heck yeah. yeah, the bloody Mary, the bloody Mary wagon. A lot, a lot less work. Think about but it. it was a it was a fun time. And if y'all ever get a chance to go to that part of Arkansas, it's beautiful. That Cooper's Hawk Golf Course. It's like the, it's won the number one public golf course in Arkansas for three or four years in a row. Michael actually took his clubs and he played a pretty good bit on Friday and Saturday. So he had he had fun doing that. Got to go drive a boat. I got me a new boat. It's just a little aluminum river boat, but man, it's fun to drive. So how'd I do? What did you think about uh, my skippering? Your skippering? <laughs> First of all, I got to get you a hat. Uh, <laughs> no, it was good. I enjoyed it. It was pretty fun. I did not. I was a little apprehensive about you buying a boat, but well, you know. That's not a super expensive boat, but it's pretty fast for what it is. If you like going fast on water. <laughs> I don't. I like to pee Oh uh, you're, you're more pontoon speed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm a pontooner. Really a pontoon river. It's more <laughs> no, of a, no, it's a not. fishing river. We did see, see some eagles and yeah. an eagle's nest and stuff like that. So that was cool. Got to be uh, one with nature a little bit. <laughs> Found some glass on the island. Um, Jack Daniels was this past weekend. Yeah, it was. Man, oh, we had some team outlaw people doing pretty good, didn't we? Yeah. Um. So first place grand champion was Scuffletown Smokers. I don't think they're outlaws. Uh, uh-uh, J- Janky Leg Barbecue took reserve. Janky Leg's awesome, and they're they're a team outlaw. Yes. Yeah. So they were cooking. Uh, Razor Racks. Drew, he did good. He yeah. was, was he third again? Yeah, he was third. I'm pretty sure that might be the, his second year in a row to get. Third place of the Jack. That's, He's a heck that's of a strong. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Triple H Barbecue was fourth, and uh, Luton Booty, old uh, Sterling. Yeah. Fifth. Yeah, good, good. So I, I recognize a few of those. All right, I bet it was a live. beautiful time to be at the Jack. There was no rain, and it was, it was just fall, and the leaves are changing. Mark went Whiskey's for a few days. <laughs> Whiskey's in the air. It does smell good around there. Yeah. Um, Mark went, and he said it was pretty cool. It was really nice. It's got him fired back up to try to, try to get <laughs> try back to get in the back Jack. in the Jack. 
It ain't got me that fired up. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was pulled up the awards, you know, and I, I they had an award for the spookiest site decoration contest. Really? I didn't, I didn't know they did that. I guess it's new. Yeah. You'd be all over that. I would do the Take a bunch of decorations. <laughs> That's pretty cool, though. Yeah, the uh, shed got to go cook. Yeah, they got a, a People's Choice Award or something uh, like that. They cooking got a, from the homeland or something uh, like yeah, that. Yeah, they, they got a couple or... calls. Um, there was this old contest that we did that always had a Porta John decorating contest <laughs> and a toilet race. <laughs> they had a lot of and fun a beer stuff. keg. How yeah. far could you throw an empty keg of beer? That was a great contest. They did a what bunch was of that fun. Lakeland Fun Fest? Yeah, that's what. But it was at the Ag Center. It wasn't in Lakeland anymore. Anyway, I won. Uh, uh, Porter John decorating. What did you decorate? Not- it was the Players Club, wasn't it? We did two different ones. One year we did the Players Club, which was like a a gentleman's club bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> we got like red uh, rope stanchions. Red rope it was stanchions. like, yeah. And then you had red carpet down and you had little fake dollars all thrown down the carpet. <laughs> yeah. And when you opened it up, it was like cheetah print and lights and all this stuff inside the the toilet. That's hilarious. I then, did, what the, didn't you do another one one year, or did you only do it that one year? I thought you did like a rocket or something. I remember that year we won. Yeah, but and you did a wild game cook this spring where it was like a decorating contest. Yeah. Your site was mm-hmm. yeah, that was in Cenotopia. I like that. Well, I think we're probably going to do that one again. That was a fun one, but we got to go a little more on the decor. Yeah, we just kind of threw something together and hung a dead turkey up. <laughs> I mean, I thought that's what won it. So we actually went out and killed a turkey that morning and brought it back and hung it up. Thank you. But I think it, I think it went the opposite. It, they took points away for that <laughs> having a dead animal. All these other people had full mounts. So we got the real thing. It's it fresh. It's a wild game. Yeah. yeah, it's a wild game cook-off. What do you expect? Um, speaking of winning, did you see Riley the steak princess? Yeah, it's her dad texted me. He was uh, they were stoked. He was, she won the grand champion at the Pusa Q in the backyard division, which is a huge yeah, product. yeah. That's awesome. She she kicks a butt. I think they went. She went to the Jack and cooked with. Uh, I think it. She cooked a bunch of tri tips, and they were doing it with I think B and B and like a live fire grill or something. Was it CAB and stuff? Yeah, certified. I guess I saw they were up there. Yeah. Man, you know those tri tips are good. CAB meat is yeah, hard to beat. I mean, it's no wagyu, but you know, but it's good. It's good. Um, Thermalworks came out with some new toys. This, oh they man, I'm excited. Out. Yeah, I brought it in here. I wanted to, I wanted to tell folks about it because I hadn't, I hadn't even opened it yet. But it's called the RFX, and I've been searching for one that would actually work for a long time and I've yet to find it. What, and what it? I'm talking about is a probe that's a meat probe specific that you can put in your smoker, close the door. If you got a rotisserie, you don't have to worry about wires or anything. That's how this works. And it's supposed to work better than what did it say? I thought there was one that came in a wooden box. It is the the meat, the meter or yeah, whatever. Yeah, but meter. I never could get them to I mean, it just wouldn't work and it wouldn't work in the old hickories. And then we had another one that was I forget which other one. It, it didn't work. I just never could get them to do right. They would work a little bit, and they wouldn't. But this one, the Thermalworks, I trust them, first off. They make some good stuff. They don't pay you to say it. You just like it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they did. not They sent you Yeah, that. they sent yeah. me this to try. But I asked them for it. <laughs> I didn't, it wasn't like, hey, you want one? I was like, no, I need to. Y'all got this gate, this meat gateway coming. I got to try it. But it has a, it's a new RFX wireless and it says it outperforms Bluetooth. What else does it say? Blast through smokers, ovens, and walls. Charges in 10 minutes and you get over 24 hours of cooking on it. Wow. You get real time updates through their app. So it interfaces with that and withstands heat up to a thousand degrees. So that's safe. You How many probes is oven. it? Just one. Uh, this one's just one. Uh, I, and I had, and it comes with a little gateway and it gets 1500 foot line of sight range. But it looks like, it's a single probe that goes in the meat, and then it has a little gateway, and that talks to the, the cloud, and that sends it to the app. So, What is it, an R- RFX. RFX? You can buy up to four, a four probe. Oh, you can buy? I would do it on four. Mm-hmm. This is just a solo. I'm, I'm seeing what the price tag is I'm on this thing. I'm stick this in a brisket, see if it'll roll. No, that can't be the price. Oh, that's just the probe. Wait. I think it's uh I think it's like 150 bucks, 159 bucks. This yeah. one's saying Tyler. 89, but I think oh. it might just be the probe. Yeah. I'm sure you can add probes onto it, like this one probably. I don't know. I'm gonna give y'all. I'm, I'm gonna tell you the truth. Does it work? I'm gonna stick it, stick it in one of my pits and see what happens. 
Yeah, one fifty nine. Oh, okay, that's it's way really less that than bad. I expected. Yeah. Let me. They see. got a new square dot too. I don't have one of those yet. Uh, Christmas gift. The four probe is three fifty. Is it? Yeah, but so that's it's a four a, prober. Yeah. So it's another eighty bucks a probe. Well, I, yeah. Didn't you say you could buy a probe for eighty bucks? Mm-hmm. So that makes sense. But yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, I'm excited to see if it works because that's always been a thing. Like when you have a rotisserie pit, you can't, you know, you can't run just a regular meat probe in anything, or you got to turn your rotisserie off because all the wires would get twisted up. And there never, there never has been one that really, really worked great. They would work part of the time, and but uh, I'm I'm excited to see if this one. I mean, yeah. we're a big fan of Thermoworks. Yeah, they're, just because they work, they work they're good. They're, they have silicone spatulas, and they're my favorite silicone spatulas. You use those, they're cooking in the stove. Yeah, the and they're not cheap either, but they last forever. They don't tear up like regular spatulas. They don't get chewed up in the dishwasher. Yeah, they don't get chewed up in the dishwasher. They have trivets too that we, we use those all the time. time. Yeah, it's just like a little. Thing to set a hot pot on. That's actually a pretty good Christmas gift, like those spatulas for people. But yeah, I'm excited to see how this RFX works. Um, just, just got it this week. I mean, like it just came in. You know, you're talking about doing a rotisserie turkey. Oh yeah, heck yeah! We can stick that. Oh, I didn't think about that. That's just in time. It's a good way to like test it out. Yeah. Yep, because if it'll shoot through that ceramic, because we'll do that on the Primo, and that's it's even thicker than the probably the old hickory. I would think. I imagine it'd be a wall. Mm. As, th- as, thick a, as thick as a wall, I guess. Yeah. Um, you were talking about I'm excited, testing out some chickens to make sure they're First. rotisserie. Well, I've never right. used a rotisserie on a Primo, so I don't want to just go through all the trouble of doing the turkey and the experiment, and I want to experiment with some cheap meat, chicken or pork loin or something. So that'll be a good time to. That's good. I'm I'm doing it. It won't be this weekend because we got to go to roll oak, but it'll probably be next. Um, this week you did a meatloaf, the classic meatloaf, and I'm telling y'all what that thing was some kind of good. It was. I mean, it reminded me of one that my mama used to make. And I lo- I love meatloaf. I mean, I guess a lot of people don't. I don't know why. It's comfort food to me. Is I mean, is meatloaf not comfort food to y'all? Do y'all enjoy I had it a lot when I was growing up, and it was not as good as your meatloaf. Yeah, <laughs> that's. I think mo- that's most of the problem is it's usually not good. Yeah, yeah. Not, you know, it's so easy though. Well, so what made mine better is that I use beef and pork, so it makes the texture of the meatloaf better, and it it makes it juicier because that pork's got more fat, and it gives it that flavor. Yeah, and it gives it really good flavor. I think that's a really good idea to combine yeah. those two meats. So I did. A pound of really lean, like ninety ten ground beef, and then one pound of ground pork. And I don't know what that. What do you think ground pork ratio is? I don't know. It looked either. fatty. It looked real fatty. So did you decide? I, it looked like it's about seventy thirty. <laughs> did you decide to do the higher uh, or the lower fat ratio in the beef? Yeah, to- I did because I wanted that really you know lo- leaner beef. To me, has a beefier flavor, and so you get that, and it comes through in the meatloaf. If you just use like regular oh, 80, 20 or ground chuck. This was probably, it said Angus, and I don't know if it said ground sirloin or if it was just like lean 90, 90, 10, lean part of the cow. But, but you're kind of balancing out the. It balances batter. out the fat ratio. And getting And it gives you beefy. a different texture of the meat. Because the, it's different. And see, with a meatloaf, you could use just about any kind of ground meat. I mean, you know, deer meat works great, venison, veal. I wonder if you could uh, do chicken. Have you ever I, seen a chicken meatloaf? Grab no, but I, I know somebody that made some chicken meatballs on fire. <laughs> and, and it's not any different. You yeah. just loaf it up. Instead of making balls, just make it into a loaf and cook it. Buffalo chicken loaf. <laughs> <laughs> I would think it would be pretty good. I mean, it really would. I could see doing like a chicken parm with that. Once you got the chicken meatloaf cooked and sliced. Ooh. And then put the cheese and the marinara on it. and Or you could even... Flash fry it. If you got it cold, you could flash fry it and get a little crispy. I bet that'd be pretty good. Or flat top it. Yeah, that might, that'd might. be a different take on it. So I took your meatloaf leftovers. You had cooked that meatloaf, and then I took it that night and made a meatloaf sandwich out of it. And it was just white bread, mayonnaise, and pickles. Blue plate? Of course. Blue plate mayonnaise. The best mayonnaise on the planet. Since 1927. <laughs> <laughs> but... um. But that's all it was. But I started thinking, what if you took that meatloaf and flat topped it, added cheese to it, kind of almost made like a grilled cheese meatloaf sandwich? That would be really good. I think so too. Because it would get the little crunchy. It would get crunchy on the outside, and it 
that meatloaf holds together well. That's always my thing when I make a meatloaf. Is it going to stay together? So I did two eggs, a cup and a half of just regular breadcrumbs, and it held fine. A little bit of ketchup, a little bit of Worcestershire, some seasonings, onion and garlic, parsley. I mean, it don't get any easier making one. It's nothing. It's it's, it's simple. And you can make them smaller if you want the little individual ones. I used to have, uh, in fact, I did a recipe on this years ago, is the mini meatloafs. And so you can buy those mini loaf pans and you can make little individual ones. You did one uh, one time where you put like bacon inside the loaf pan and then put your meatloaf yeah. in there. So it kind of made a wrap. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That sounds wonderful. Yeah, it was good. It's good. <laughs> well, Shell, so Shell, this time of year, it gets to be, that's what got me to think about meatloaf. Is it's starting to get cool. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's like fall comfort and food, it's comfort yeah. food. And then, so you used to always do one for Halloween for Michael, but it was a mummy meatloaf. Do you remember that? Yeah. You would make like a, shape of a mummy's head and put the bacon on it and eyes and olives for eyes and little onions for teeth and stuff and that was a good meal. it looked pretty good too Heck yeah it looked- and i do like graveyard mashed potatoes <laughs> oh i was gonna ask you so what goes what goes when you what do you serve with meatloaf what what do y'all remember mashed potatoes cream uh that's the little peas that's english it. peas little english butter peas is mine, that what y'all would have, Tyler? Mine's the same, except it was mac and cheese and peas. Oh, mac and cheese and no, no mashed, mashed potatoes. potatoes. Oh, you gotta have. See, I like the meatloaf to rest over the mashed potatoes. I like that too. Put I'm, a little extra sauce or ketchup on it. I feel like growing up, gravy. for starch, we always did mac and cheese for everything yeah. for some reason. But we had we had some mac and cheese the other day. What did we have that with? Oh, sloppy joes. <laughs> Heck yeah, we took it way back when we got home. When we got home Sunday from traveling, we didn't feel like doing much. So Shell did a quick order from Kroger and had to drop off stuff to make Sloppy Joes, and I made Sloppy Joes. Yeah, but you didn't just, you kind of did that meatloaf sandwich idea. You made like Sloppy Joe grilled cheese. Yeah. Well, after you, I mean, Sloppy Joe, what did it say on the can? It's one well, pound of meat. Well, he's like mamwich, man. Yeah, yeah, one pound of meat, one can of mamwich, and that's it. You <laughs> added some onion and garlic, Tell didn't everybody you? kiss the chef or something. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I doctored it up. I didn't just do it just like the can said. I sauteed onion and garlic and then browned my meat with that and then seasoned it with some Italian stallion and, of course, some AP and then mix this stuff with it and taste it, see if it needs anything else. But it's pretty dang good. Sloppy Joes are solid, man. I don't know why anybody wouldn't like them. I love Sloppy Joes. I do, too. I do too man. They're, They're good. Just a loose meat sandwich. <laughs> so then how'd you build the sandwich? So I took Texas toast and I put some butter down um, on the on a flat top. Butter down, toast in, smeared blue plate on it, uh, put a piece of cheese on it, let that start to melt, and then I topped them with the sloppy joe, and then put another piece of cheese on it and closed it up. But I, I put uh, actually on you ours, put pickles, didn't on you? ours, I put dill pickle, like mayonnaise, dill pickle, a little thinly sliced onion, and then the cheese. So it kind of made a sloppy joe melt. That's all it was it was a sl- griddled sloppy joe melt. And you want to talk about good. It was so good. And we served it with the Kraft premium mac and cheese, wasn't it? <laughs> so I have a hot take on mac and, that mac and cheese. The deluxe? So we bought the deluxe, and you've seen it before. It's more expensive. It's a little bit bigger box, and it comes with the actual like cheese sauce. Like you squeeze it out. It's not the dry powder. Yeah, it's not the dry powder. It is not as good as the traditional powder powder. Milk butter one. I, I like the noodles better though. They remind me. They of are more better of a, noodle. It's, a, it's a, like it's a shorter, fatter noodle instead mm-hmm. of the long, skinny ones. And in box mac and cheese, it, 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 you would think you could turn that one into a homemade looking one easy. Yeah. yeah. But the sauce, I'm with you. I don't like the sauce. I think that's why is because you can build the sauce yourself and like add things to it. Like yeah, like with the, the dry powder. Yeah, because yeah. I used to do like half a cup of sour cream or mayonnaise, yeah, and like that in with it, and yeah. Oh, well, sure, you still cheese. did. Did you do that to this box? Did I you did. Still add mayonnaise and sour cream. Just a little squeeze. Yeah, because well, it gives it it gives it a little tang. Yeah, you get that and blue added, plate little tanginess from it. And I added a little extra shredded cheese too. You got to have extra gotta cheese and mac and cheese and a little seasoning, but. But, so Michael won't eat the Sloppy Joe. He said it's throw up. I'm not eating a throw up sandwich. And I and, and so I told Shell, I said, you know what? If I took and bolted some spaghetti noodles and put this over it, he would think it was the best spaghetti ever. <laughs> he would. But because I put it on bread with cheese and toasted it perfect to perfection, <laughs> he wouldn't eat the throw up sandwich. So I was like, you know what? All right. Eat the mac and cheese. I ain't making you nothing else. I'm going to have three of those one day. Oh, no. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, they're already picky. Like really? I feel like, as from such a young age, they they wouldn't eat sloppy joes. There's How no could way. you not like sloppy joes, man? He said he had some bad sloppy joes at school. I'm like, I'm sure you have. We all have. That's a, I mean, that's one of the ones I remember. <laughs> yeah. You know, it stays with you. It's, it's a cool lunch sloppy joe. Those but sloppy this, bun wrapped up in full. This ain't that. No. Yeah. <laughs> This is premium <laughs> deluxe sloppy joes. I can hear the noise in my head from the cafeteria. The <laughs> 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 Ours, I think, I'm pretty sure they're already put together and wrapped up. They just set it on the tray. Oh, yeah. Mine wasn't wrapped up. Yeah, I figure like, like wrapping it up would make it better. It kind of steam. and yeah, it, No. Mine was like stale. You couldn't, like in our school lunch, you couldn't tell the difference in the barbecue sandwich and the sloppy joe. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it was just like mystery to me. <laughs> we ate it. It didn't hurt us. I do remember the sloppy joes being particularly harsh. Yeah. In cafeterias. Yeah. The How to Barbecue Right podcast is brought to you by our friends at Primo Grills. Shell, did you know that Primo is the only ceramic grill made right here in the good old USA? What? Are you telling me that Primo Grills are proudly crafted here in the USA, ensuring top notch quality and support for local craftsmanship? I sure am. Plus, Primo Grill not only delivers mouthwatering flavor, but because of their innovative oval design and superior ceramic construction, Primo Grills also gives you a ton of cooking versatility. Whether you're smoking low and slow or searing a steak to perfection, Primo Grills gives you the consistent heat distribution for mouthwatering results every time. What well, she said, y'all. Y'all visit PrimoGrill.com and check them out. So you said you use the flat top, but what, what we really use. It's I mean, presto it's a flat top. Yeah. yeah. What, are the, what do you call It's an electric griddle, I guess. Is that the, yeah. the technical name of it? It's like a 20 inch. I, I ain't that big. I wouldn't think 16, maybe. I don't I mean, it's countertop size. Yeah. It's you like can 20 do, bucks at Walmart. You can do three sandwiches on it. That's about all that. I mean, comfortable. Oh, you That's could probably it. do four. Maybe. I don't know. You use it for pancake. You use it for breakfast more than anything. So I got this little tip. Uh, I've been doing Eggo waffles on the griddle. Because <laughs> when you put them in toaster, they get too hard. Mm. You know, you microwave them. They're not crispy. So I put a little butter down on the griddle, throw my frozen uh, Eggo waffles on there, bring them up slow so they defrost and then get them crunchy on the outside. They're really good that way. That's crazy that you're bringing this up today because for the first time this morning, I tried air frying Eggo waffles because our toaster broke and it was like, crazy how different of a texture well, yeah good? it's crunchy yeah it was like crunchy on the outside and then when you get to the middle it's like soft and like the perfect waffle like yeah it was so good i was like heck yeah the toaster kind of ruins them yeah i agree i, I mean, never liked toasted i mean I, I like the ones that you you know mom would make in a waffle machine but yeah the old egos lego my ego no it gave me an idea though doing that what's that just something you're going to share, something you're going to keep on your secret little keep list. Keep that on my secret little list. <laughs> I got to try it, see if it's any good first. With Eggo waffles. I could see that being a TikTok. Um, yeah, but I love that little $20 Walmart griddle. We've yeah, we've already talked about having to buy one of those for the cabin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, we're going to need one of these. I mean, when you don't want to go outside and fire up your Blackstone, yeah, that one's easy. I'm and sure it's, it's easy no- to clean. It's yeah. got to be no different than like the I have the Blackstone E series or whatever. Yeah, it's same. It's the same thing. That's the one that's made to plug in and you leave inside, right? Yep. Exact same thing. How much is that one? Probably think, fifty bucks. I think I paid eighty nine. Oh, oh okay. Little, yeah, this one's not that expensive. Oh no, twenty bucks. Yeah, Walmart. Walmart. <laughs> yeah, probably should have just bought that one. <laughs> and it's still got the old electric element thing. Like you remember your mom had on electric. I, uh, yeah. What was the other one called? Knob. It had a dome. It's electric skillet. It's the same kind of plug with the old turn plug on it. That's how you know it works when the light comes on. It's easy to clean. It's easy to store. It's easy to pull yeah. back out. I mean, I've grilled cheese. It's a grilled cheese machine. It toasts it perfect. Doesn't get too hot. You know, it's a, it's a slow toast. I don't think, a I mean, I wouldn't want to cook like bacon and sausage and stuff on it. The other day when Michael had friends over, I cooked Eggo waffles and sausage. Eggos on, that, on one side, sausage on the other. Did it not make a mess doing that? No. Really? It cooks pretty good egg. Like I've cooked, it's a non-stick. It's really non-stick, so it doesn't, you don't need much oil or anything. And uh, it cooks really good eggs. I saw this on TikTok the other day, and I'm curious to y'all's take. So, when y'all make grilled cheese, do you just put? So you obviously you like butter or put mayonnaise on either side of your bread. Yep, you put yep. your cheese in the middle. 
Do you smush the sandwich or do you just? No, I hate it when it's, I do not want a smushed grilled cheese. I want it to be fluffy. Okay. But if you turn it too much, it's, it does. So that's why the master of a grilled cheese is a one flip grilled cheese. You toast one side perfect and you gently flip it over so it doesn't squish that side down. You do the other side and then take it off and then don't cut it immediately either. Mm -hmm. Because when you cut it, it's going to squish it. You got to let it sit there for a second. And it tastes better in triangles. You yes. think so? <laughs> I agree. But I hate the ones that are squished. Like a Sonic? Yeah. That's how I grew up eating them, and that's squished? how my kids eat them. Yeah, so that's how I cook them. Yeah. But Do you actually put the spatula on it and smash it? Yeah, like just like you would like a smash yeah. burger or something. But okay. I, like in a professional setting, I was taught not to do that. Yeah. Like when I worked in kitchens and stuff like mm-hmm. that, mm-hmm. you weren't supposed to do that. I'll also say I've learned with grilled cheeses, uh, don't put the butter on the bread. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Put it on the like the surf- cast iron, the skillet, whatever, and let it kind of get bubbly and yeah. then put the bread on it. It gives you a, a totally even toast. It's a, Everything's buttery. And it seems to make it crispier instead of mushier. That's because I think what happens when you go to try to spread it on the bread itself, it gets too dense. And then that's what sogs it out and it'll cook right through. But if that butter's hot and on the surface of that griddle and you lay it in a pool of it, it just kind of gets what it needs and turns into a crust real quick. Yeah. That's basically what I do. I'll just put a little butter in there. I put a <clears> thin <throat> layer of mayonnaise, blue plate mayonnaise on the outside of the toast. The outside too? I've yeah. done it I on put the it outside, on the inside. But I like it, yeah. Mayonnaise on the inside of a grilled cheese with the cheese against it. Oh, it's something special. But you can't go too thick. No, it can't be. It's, it's got to be just a the right amount. Just the right amount. <laughs> you didn't, that. I mean, like, you know, fat people know how to cook grilled cheese. <laughs> 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 we can get into this. <laughs> and we even talked about cheese toast. <laughs> oh, I had something good before I went to that concert last night. Uh, we went to a little. Oh yeah, Mount pre-game. went and saw the Black Crows last night. Heck yeah, and driving and crying. They seen better days. That might be their last show. Uh, you driving and crying opened up for? Them? Yeah, for the Black Crows. I hadn't seen them since like 1994. <laughs> yeah. Free show at like Oxford at the Grove. Anyway, what yeah. Have? It was it's called Parmesan Parmesan Crisp. Yeah. Have you had them? Yeah. Oh, they're so good. I used to buy them. It's like that moon cheese I used to buy. Yeah, but no, these are homemade. Oh, so, okay. And uh, my buddy Coley's wife made them. And she said she got it out of the, uh, I, I wrote it in my phone in the notes. It's the Jackson Junior League 1987 cookbook or whatever. I said, I bet she has got that one. <laughs> but it's, so she took. Regular white bread, put it on a sheet pan, light layer of butter, toasted it. You take it out, and then you uh, mix cream cheese, uh, butter, and Parmesan, I guess, and some seasonings, and then you spread that lightly over the toast. And then I think you cook it again for just a few minutes, and you take it out and you freeze it. And then you cut it. Well, you cut it, and then you freeze it. And then when you want to take them out, you pop them back. What shape do you cut it into? It's supposed to be rounds, but she had it in square in rectangles. Yeah, okay. But man, I'm talking. It was the it. It was so smooth. It had a ton of flavor, and it was just like for an appetizer. I said, I'm gonna do a recipe on how to make these things and jazz them up because it's like just a little perfect little appetizer bite. So when you it'd definitely be a holiday or a tailgate thing. Do you serve them hot or cold? They're they're. So, I mean, they're hot. Okay. Because you retoast them. See, she said you got to. Okay. It takes a little bit to make them, but it's not hard. It's like just time is what it takes. Cause you got to freeze it, and then you got when you when you get ready to cook them, you're supposed to let them come back to room temp. I gotta I gotta find the recipe and see. What's the point of freezing it and then defrosting? I think just for storage. Okay. I guess I don't really know because that's what it sounded like to me. She said she just keeps stacks of little Ziploc bags of them. Oh. Okay. So when she's getting ready to go somewhere, she can take them out, pop them, and they're ready to go. Oh, that's a so that's kind of like a prepping thing. Yeah. But it was yeah there was that recipe, and then she had another dish. I can't remember what she called it. It was some kind of dip. But uh, it's in that cookbook too. I wrote both of them down. I'm not gonna. My phone's in the office. I'm gonna, I'll have to t- don't remind me to tell you because those were so good, really good. Did you dip them in anything? Or you just ate them and they're no. You just yeah. yeah yeah. It's just like a little savory bite. Oh, that sounds so good. It's it was like a better version of a cheese straw because you know how cheese straws are like crunchy. I mean they're just dry. It's like eating sawdust almost. These are not. But you have the fl- all the flavor of a kind of a cheese straw in a buttery bite, if that makes any sense. But it was really good. I had something else great for lunch yesterday. What was that? We were, it was Buck Jerky Film Day. And so 
me and Mikey had to go out in the field and do some stuff, and Mark stayed in and cooked some lunch, and he made – I've never had this dish. It was turnip greens with rotel and uh, and a pound of meat. And he used ground beef. He could use sausage or whatever, and then he doctored it up. And you ate it with cornbread, and in the, in the cornbread, you split the cornbread piece in half and put blue plate mayonnaise in there, and you ate it in a bowl. So it was like a bowl of a turnip greens and meat. Man, it was fire. I'm really? talking about really good, really good. You didn't tell me. Y'all just said you want to try these turnip greens. I was like, no. Yeah, no. It was like a, I don't know what you call it. I don't know where Mark got this idea to do this from. Because I've never had, I've had turnip greens with like ham. Yeah, but I've never had it. But that was more know. for seasoning. Yeah, it's kind of like you know how they do a Hoppin' Johns, where it's like black eyed peas and rice or whatever. They, so was it's it kind of a version of? I mean, it was just a di- combo dish. So did it have a lot of juice? You know how a lot of turnip yeah, greens have a it, lot of juice. Not a lot. Okay. He sauteed them instead of like did them in a bowl, a pot with water. Oh, okay. So he did them in like a deep skillet and let the moisture cook off. But I guess he browned the meat, put the veg in there, put the rotel, put the turnip green. I didn't see him do it. The video hadn't come out yet, but he, did y'all record? Y'all recorded it? Yeah. Didn't you? Yeah. So I, that all sounds accurate. Yeah. I think he put a little prime beef in it. But it was, it was really, I was surprised. Was it I was spicy? like, spicy? Yeah. It had, I mean, it had rotel in it. So rotel yeah. is naturally spicy. But it was good. It was, it was with the cornbread, and then you had the mayo to to kind of cut the creaminess of it. Oh, it was it was excellent. It was excellent. But I, I mean, I love turnip greens. So it was definitely like a winter dish. But it was a, it's a great deer camp dish because it's something. And he used he didn't use like frozen. He used a canned turnip greens. It's almost like a soup kind of you know like a a one kinda, pot. I guess yeah, maybe it's maybe a one pot, pot but it's not soupy. Yeah, it's not. I mean, there is some liquid to it. But it, you could eat it with a fork on a plate. It's not gonna, you know. It's not. It's not like you need a bowl. Yeah, I we did eat it. In a, I ate mine in a bowl. But I, th- I think that's what he called it. One pot turnip dinner or something like yeah. that. Okay. Tony, don't sleep on it. It's good. That was also the first time I ever tried cornbread with mayonnaise. Oh, yeah, really? Awesome. Really good. Big fan. Yeah, yeah right. cornbread with mayonnaise sets you, up, sets you right. Mark turned us on to cornbread. Yeah. Or mayonnaise I never did it cornbread. before. I always, we always we grew up with butter and cornbread, right? Yeah. That's Heck what yeah. most people do. Mayonnaise and corn? Man, that's a game changer. Y'all try that. <laughs> if you don't do anything, get some fresh cornbread and just put a little mayonnaise on it. See what you think. It's really good. I thought I knew everything about mayonnaise. Mark <laughs> had to show me a few things. <laughs> He's a liquor off the spooner. Too, he he likes it as mayonnaise. much as I do, yeah. yeah. Um, You also did a crab rangoon dip. Yeah, that one did really good. It mm-hmm. was a good dip. I you, mean, you'd had that idea for a while. I, yeah. What makes that one good? It is not the ingredient. I mean, the crab, of course, is really good. But what makes that one so good is those crispy wontons. Man, they make the best chips. They really do. They're really light and crispy. And- yeah. Tyler said there's a place in town that's doing a bulgogi nacho with those. Mm-hmm. And so it's like a Korean take on nachos. And that's like, man, I've got to. Have you tried that? Yeah. yeah, they're excellent. Like, really good. That was the first time I'd ever had like fried wontons used as chips, and yeah. they were really good. So, like crab rangoon is one of my, it's one of my favorite. If we get Chinese food, I'm getting an appetizer of crab rangoon, and all it is is those kind of packaged up in almost like a little I don't know you, you see them called beggars purses or what you know those yeah. little appetizers got real familiar, but you're basically just bundling up some cream cheese or rolling it and tucking it. In a wonton wrapper, and then they deep fry it, and you dip it in like a little sweet and sour duck sauce or something, and it's it's excellent. But it's just it's just cream cheese and crab, pretty much. That's the basis of it. You put a little green onion in it and season it, and it's not, and but I mean to do a dip, you had to make it you had to beef it up a little more, so I added more cheese and you did goodness. cream cheese, a little blue plate. You gotta have a little mayonnaise, a little sour cream, some garlic. You put minced garlic in there yep. green onions use the whites and then use a scallion to garnish yeah um you used imitation crab meat mozzarella italian blend cheese a little soy sauce a little worcestershire sauce do you know why i used imitation i mean one thing is cheap but when i learned to make that master doug he taught me how to make that it was like <laughs> master doug <laughs> master doug since i doug <laughs> he told me he taught me how to make those. He taught me how to make the Rangoon. I, yeah. I turned it into the dip. But I, <laughs> do you remember Master Doug? I remember Master Doug. <laughs> he would with a kendo stick. He would wear you out. <laughs> he was my chef buddy that was really into martial arts. <laughs> so I called him Master Doug. <laughs> but <laughs> that helped Master Doug move one time. That was interesting. <laughs> 
It's pretty much what you think. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you're imagining, yep. yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> but he told me how to make dinner sauce chicken and grab red goon, so I'm all good with that. Anyway, so you popped all that together. Yeah, and bake it. That's it. It's, I mean, it's but easy. then, this is what I loved about it. You topped it with that sweet, sweet thai, thai chili, chili sauce. That makes it, too. That made it. It gives it, so when, when you think of a crab rangoon, you get the creaminess and the crunchiness from the wrapper, but you got to have a sweet sauce to dip it in. That's what makes it good. So that's, it just ties that sweet element together. But I don't like sweet and sour sauce. I think it's too sweet or something. Yeah. That sweet thai chili sauce is... Oh, the way Master Doug taught me to make it, all it is is like corn syrup and ketchup and pineapple juice. Yeah. It's, a, it's all it's all sweet and sour sauce is. It's just sugar, sugar, sugar. <laughs> <laughs> With the little, you know, you get the ketchup to give it the vinegar. You know. Where's the sour? The ketchup. Okay. The vinegar. This is like, this is how they make it in the restaurants. It's like ketchup, corn syrup, and pineapple juice. And sometimes they'll put chunks of pineapple in it. Ugh. I believe it. Because that's exactly what it tastes like. Yeah. That's like the one they give you with sweet and sour chicken. Michael loves it. I think all kids all love kids it. Do. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. Like, but I like the Thai sweet chili at the bottle. It's a better. Like for egg rolls or spring rolls or for any crab rangoon or anything like that, it's better. One thing we've been using a lot lately is chili garlic oil. Now, have you got into that kick yet? Mm-mm. Man, it is good on everything. It's, it is it just like chili garlic oil? Garlic chili oil. Yeah. Garlic oh, chili yeah. oil. That's oh, what it is. It's like fried pieces of, they fry garlic mm-hmm. in oil and chilies and then they jar it up and that's all it is. And you use it as a top. You see it a lot of times like you go to the ramen restaurants or you might go to a Thai restaurant. Okay. It'll be in a little jar yep. on, the, on the table. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's, I mean, it's got some heat, but it's, man, it, it'll kick an Asian dish up. It's crunchy chili. Yeah, because that's what crunchy the garlic, garlic they, chili they salt. fry the garlic in the oil. And add the peppers and stuff, and the chili peppers. It's got so much I flavor. Saw, I saw a version. It was a Mexican version of that, and it looked so good. They were frying. It was like it was on TikTok. It was like if you like crunchy gar- garlic chili oil, you're gonna love this Mexican inspired one. And man, it was just all these fresh ingredients with chilies, and then at the end they popped it with like cilantro, so it had a lot of herbs in it, and you ate it over meat, like asado. You know, if you had, if you cook anything like any kind of grilled meat, it would go with it, kind of like a chimichurri. Did you save that recipe? No, I should have. <laughs> I'm I'm the worst at doing that. All you gotta do is like hit I the know. plate. I know that's too many, <laughs> too many <stuff>. actions. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds really good. But yeah, I, I've got. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to find that because I was like, man, that would be good on chicken, on beef, on pork. So, um. Real quick, we're giving away something in the community, right? We're giving away a Gorilla Silverback in the community right now. So if you're listening to this, you have one week exactly to the day uh, to head on over to the Let's Get to Cooking community over on facebook.com forward slash group forward slash H2Q community. It's the pin post at the top by How to Barbecue Right. All you got to do is post a picture down in the comments of what you're cooking up on Thanksgiving. That could be... Uh, deviled eggs, ham, turkey, prime rib, pizza, whatever the heck you're eating on Thanksgiving, we want to see it. And then have everybody from your family friends list and then everybody else in the community should go vote on what dish they think is the best. And I have seen some awesome stuff over there. Really? Uh, yeah, that's, that's going to be a good contest. So, um, oh, but speaking of Thanksgiving, or I saw somebody, t- instead of doing Friendsgiving, they did Dipsgiving and everybody brought a dip. Hmm. And you just ate dip all night. I like that. Hot, cold, savory, sweet. All different kinds of dips. All different kinds of dips. I'm down for that. I know, me too. Sounds great. I saw another one I should have saved all ago. While I was supposed to be working, I was thumbing through. No, not you. Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> it was a smoked cream cheese taco style. They had took a block of cream cheese and I guess seasoned it up and smoked it. It didn't have directions, but it just looked good. And then it was a dip. And so they put like taco meat on it, salsa, cheese, lettuce, all the stuff you'd put on a taco, Ooh, had it yeah. over that cream cheese, and then you just drag your chip through it. I was like, ooh, that's a great idea. Oh, you could do that with all different all kinds, kinds of, of flavors, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So, okay. Lee from the community, he heard you talking about the 12-ounce packages of bacon last week. Yeah. 
and complaining about it. And he said it reminded him of a. I've heard that. That's old. <laughs> I've never heard it. You never heard it before. Uh-uh. Oh, that's a good one. It was an old man calling to complain to Jimmy, Jimmy Dean's Dean, sausage. Yeah. <laughs> he said they moved from the sixteen ounce to the twelve ounce, and that ain't gonna work for his family. He's got three grown men over two hundred pounds, and what he say? I feel his pain. I might have been some kid. <laughs> <laughs> and, a, and a plump dirt Dutch girl for a wife. <laughs> that, 12. That, that 12 ounces ain't going to work. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite was when he said, that maple sage flavor, <laughs> I ain't eating that. I ain't a northerner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And, and we had this thing in the community pop up today, uh, this week about a smoke buddy option. Yeah. What's so- the smoke genie? Yeah. What is this? So AI is everywhere. So uh, I've I've noticed Meta has been pushing it on you. Like they don't want you to search anymore. They want you to ask the AI. Yeah. So it's kind of like I don't know if y'all have Googled recently, but when you first when you Google a question, Google comes back with an automated AI response yeah. that it gets yeah. from the top five search. And I kind of like it. Yeah. It usually gives you the answer you're looking for or a roundabout. Sometimes. You know? Sometimes. Most time not. This is kind of what Smoke Buddy's supposed to be. So uh, it'll be at the top as well. You'll be able to ask it questions. It's going to use the community's data and the answers to questions that some of our community members have already given to try to answer your grilling questions. Hmm. I want y'all to ask it the craziest. That's what I was just like, Let's see if we can confuse the heck out of Smoke Buddy. We can do a whole like video. Who series. come up? So did you come up with the design of this, or did they? Oh, it's all. Like, oh, it. They came up with the name of it. They came up with like every. It did just, they install it on there automatically? Yeah, and you don't. I don't think you have an option of not having it. Like you have to have it. Really. And so you know, I I was able to go in there and tailor some of the way that it kind of talks to you. I guess. Yeah. But. I'm interested. To see. So, so are they every- doing this for other communities, I guess? Like if, oh, I'm sure. If you've got a yeah. card community where you're you know, collecting magic mm-hmm. cards or whatever, they've got a magic buddy or something. Yeah, so they'll have one. Like Hernando Happenings will have one. Yeah. Are they all called Smoke Buddy or just us? No, ours? just ours. So like okay. Hernando's might be Hernando Buddy or something like that. So buddy. I'm curious to see. And the more questions y'all ask it, the more... It Supposedly, lies. the smarter it gets, yeah. So, oh, we need to have the smoke, smoke buddy question of the week, then. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of crazy stuff we can come up with to ask this thing? I think I can go in there and it's metric data and see like what people are asking it too. So, that I'm I want to like, ask it how to cook camel, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what it says, <laughs> low and slow. It's <laughs> pretty tough, you got to break it down a lot. <laughs> um, so David wanted he he made the suggestion the next time you're on with Greg talk about horse. <laughs> it is, it is, okay, I bet Greg. <laughs> this must have come up on Greg's show before. <laughs> Let's see. I, I'll ask Greg if he eat horse. I, I'm definitely doing that. Greg, if you listen to this, we're talking about horse next time. <laughs> you need to come up with a few recipes <laughs> for horse Be prepared. Yeah, horse recipes. <laughs> Not that you're going to cook, just that yeah. you can talk about. Oh. I'm sure they might turn into mince meat or something, don't they? Ground horse. I don't know. Do they do horse steaks? Uh, I don't know. Got to do a little research on. Yeah, I don't know anything about eating thing. horse. I know they do it over in Europe. It's a thing, and the restaurants have a flag outside with the horse on it if they serve it. So, uh, you're not curious? No, not even like the preparation or of horse. Yeah, I mean. I mean, I ain't saying I wouldn't eat a horse. I'd have to. You know. <laughs> Depends on what day in the yeah. apocalypse we're on. Yeah, that's right. uh, have we have we went through all the chicken? <laughs> There's a lot of chicken meat out there. All the chickens are gone. All the pigs are gone. All the cows are gone. We're eating horse. <laughs> I'm definitely going horse before I go pets. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. At what yeah. point do you bring in? So, what about guinea pigs? They're a delicacy down in Ecuador. Jay Durbin's. Yeah, that's that's what that's exactly what I thought of. Would you eat one of those? You're basically eating a fat rat. <laughs> I mean, but it's, it's not any different than eating a squirrel. I, I mean, I, I eat squirrel. I'm not going to go buy a guinea pig to eat it, but I know I ain't cooking somebody's Shetland pony either. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying, if times get tough. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't rule it. I out. wouldn't rule out eating a horse. <laughs> <laughs> we may have ate it and don't even know it. It may have been in something. Um. So if we go to Europe, are you gonna make? Are you gonna try it? I mean, 
Are we at a restaurant that specializes in yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We're not getting it from the the vendor off the street. Yeah. Like, if luck. you tell me our special today, we got lucky stallions. So <laughs> I'd, right. I'd be more apt to like appetizer it. You know what I'm saying? That way I'm sharing it with the table. It's not something yeah. I have to catch yeah. personally because I wouldn't want to order my entree to be that, but. If it's like a shareable hors d'oeuvre, then sure. I mean, we've eaten escargot. Yeah. And they were pretty good. They're real good. I don't That's think like, I've gotten that adventurous before. Maybe not. No. Snails, it's, it's kind of like a mushroom, a buttery, garlicky mushroom. Hmm. I've had it one time where it was really good, and I've had it one time where it was overcooked and- Just earthy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, okay, I got a question for you. I have a nice beef brisket, 17 pounds. It has a pretty big hump of meat in the center- of the thick of it. Yep. Should I trim it down or just leave it? I usually cut it down or tear it dynamic. So I know what he's talking about. Like if you'll take your hand and flip that brisket over, lay it flat with that humps on the top side, you can kind of squeeze it and it kind of, it'll come up and it'll kind of makes a ridge. And usually I take that ridge and just knock it right down to where it's all even. And that's, that's just a, a good way to do it. And typically that's on the fat side. And so I take that fat down to like a quarter inch and then you, that way it'll lay flat and you can, depending on your pit, you can cook it fat up or fat down. And what's I that? usually depend on where the, the majority of my heat's coming from is where the fat goes. So it's a buffer. Um, and what's the point of taking the hump out? To to make it a little more aerodynamic, to where when air's flowing over it, you don't you don't want to anything that's going to dam up the airflow. You know, and that's just the way meat it cooks better that way, and uh, makes it even. It's going to make a prettier slice when you get ready to cook it. Now, do you have to? No, but a lot of times. If you cook that thing with that big old hump, it's going to make that brisket raise up and twist. And if you watch, you know, any videos of people on how to trim a brisket, they always slick that down. Make round, it round off, you know, kind of round off your corners where you don't have any sharp, sharp angles. That'll keep it from crumbling out. But I would take it off. Just trim it down a little. So Chris asks, um, when you blend your own mar- burger meat, what type of meat do you use and what's your fat ratio? Uh, but your own? Yes. So usually, I mean, I, li- I like an 80-20 burger. That's my prefer. And so, I mean, even if you just go buy chuck roast and grind it, you're going to, you know, that's that's usually what you're buying in the supermarket. It's 80-20 ground chuck. But um, that's that's usually what I go for. Uh, what do you pick, What do you start with for um, your red? But, I guess your 80. I mean, it's just, I, I don't, I don't add any extra fat to it. I just grind it. So it's got fat already in it. The chuck roast. I okay. guess it's, I don't know. The, I mean, if you had to calculate it, is it really 80, 20? I don't know. Probably not. Now, if you did have, you know. What's something like venison? Oh, with, with that, we usually do 80, 20, but we'll do, you know, so much lean and then so much pork fat. I don't put beef fat in it. I put pork. I like the I like the flavor and the way pork fat melts, and so it does better in it. But you could use beef fat. I know people that do. I imagine it's hard to get fat yeah. of any kind, really. Yeah. yeah. Um. Next week we have <clears throat> Kevin Green from the butcher shop. Oh, going to re- be a guest. Finally. <laughs> We've been. Man, that's awesome. I can't wait to talk to Calvin. I got a bunch of questions. I wish he could come here and do it live. We're going to do it remote, though, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Has he ever been on the podcast before? No. Nah. No, I don't think so. I say, I've worked here for a while, and I've, he's never been on since I've been here, so I'm looking forward to it. I don't know. Have we ever had a butcher? I don't think we have. A uh, butcher, probably. David. Um, Has he been on our podcast? Mm-hmm. I don't know if he's been on, yeah. And we this- haven't had a ton of guests. Because we never really had their remote capability down right. Yeah. But we think we're working on it, so we're going <laughs> to add some more guests. Well, when we started, nobody wanted to do it. <laughs> yeah, like, why did, would you want to come get the closet with us? <laughs> do this podcast? And we didn't have that remote tech capability, and now... <laughs> we did one... What, did you do the first one with Matt? He was probably our first remote guest, wasn't he? Yes. I think so. Yes. And then we've had... We had a few people come to the closet... I think Lawson and Shane, Kendall, Heath. Heath, yeah. yeah. Um, Cosmo. Co- yeah, Cosmo. It at had that point. People, it had to be kind of people we knew. <laughs> it was embarrassing. Yeah, you got to come to our house and then come upstairs in the sewing closet. <laughs> and then we moved it out to a bedroom. 
And then we moved into the cave house. <laughs> the cave house? I call it the rat house. Rat house. Yeah. <laughs> um, that was a, that was it. When that mouse jumped up on my desk, that was your last straw. <laughs> is that that building over there by Hernando High School? Yeah. 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 Okay. That was a rental. It worked. I mean, we, until we outgrew it. It was our first office, yeah. yeah. Um, This weekend, we're going to Royal Oak. It's the Royal Oak Invitational. What is the Royal Oak Invitational? It's a it's a contest that Royal Oak holds for its ambassador teams, and they invite all the top teams or whatever that they have in their program to to their headquarters in Roswell, Georgia, for a KCBS contest. It's a pretty. They're doing a People's Choice too. For it's a pretty stacked contest. Oh heck yeah, it is. It's pretty competitive, Definitely. and I th- the trophies are awesome. I think the prize money's pretty good. It is. It's really good. They, and I think they buy all the meat for you if you cook in it. We're not cooking. I got to go do a demo on a drink. Hospitality. And, uh, hospitality, <laughs> baby. Hospitality. That's it. We're going to go hang out. Thursday night, they're doing a, a big like seafood bowl um, for everybody at the pavilion. And then Friday will be demos and things like that. And they're at the, I think they might do the People's Choice on, I don't know if it's on Friday or Saturday. And Saturday's like the main contest. And they kind of roll, roll out the red carpet for the team. Yeah, absolutely. It's an appreciation thing for for their their employees at Royal Oak and for all the teams that you know that help them out and spread the word about their charcoal. I noticed you got the hat on today. Royal yeah, Oak, looks good. Well, I had to, I'm, I was packing last night. Pack? So. <laughs> um, the campus there in Roswell, Georgia, is it's beautiful. Awesome. Yeah, love it. The weather should be perfect. I, mean, I think it's going to be a high of like seventy. Oh, it's going to be chilly. Yeah. It's, it's finally chilly weather. It is. It's and I can't cook chili this weekend. Next week. What are we doing next week? Going to see Dusty? Yeah. You got all kinds of things planned for next weekend. Yeah. I, I will be going to Mossy Oak to do a podcast with those guys on Tuesday. And then I've got a little hunting trip planned to the middle of the week. And then come back, go to a comedy show. And then maybe Sheen Fest Saturday night. Football. And Sunday make chili. Look at that. Week's done. <laughs> <laughs> How easy was that? Well, Matt, that's all I have for you today. All right. Well, Tyler, tell everybody where they can find us in the community and all that. So one more time, head on over to facebook.com forward slash group forward slash H2Q community. We do giveaways like this all the time, giving away the silver back right now. Uh, Going to be doing some more giveaways here in the near future. And in the meantime, when you're not taking part in a giveaway, just hang out. Lots of awesome people sharing awesome recipes, asking good questions, and, and hopefully helping answer yours as well. So let me ask you this. Do we get to see the questions that you that people ask this bot? Because yeah, that would I be think entertaining. So. I think so. So I'll have to... Yeah, you know, within, within, that log, with, I want to see that within reason. Everybody, yeah. <laughs> do they know like that they're asking the bot, or is I mean, it just like sure. I think, is it up there at the top? I think so. I'm sure there will be a few um, older people that probably don't. Go ahead and ask me something. <laughs> <sure>. <laughs> older people, what are you trying to say? Did you hear that? It's because I got a little gray in my beard. I don't know technology. <laughs> I'm gonna talk to this. Hey, <laughs> how's this work? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You only get three wishes, three ask. <laughs> but yeah. When I go there, I don't see. It's going to be live in five and days. Oh, uh, okay. So it's not live. <laughs> <laughs> Can't find it. Can't find it. Should I reboot? Should I reboot? <laughs> uh, all right, Shell. All right. We got to get to packing. We got to. Road trip to Atlanta or Roswell. Next stop, Bucky's. <laughs> Give me a brisket sandwich. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> if you'd like to connect with Malcolm, it's How to BBQ, right? On Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and of course, YouTube. If you'd like to connect with me, it's Miss Southern Shell on Instagram and TikTok. All right. Well, we appreciate y'all hanging out with us again here at How to Barbecue, right? And we'll be back next week week to do it am i coming back to do a podcast yes we're having kevin green on oh yeah that's right man friday friday i'll be back friday (laughs) good lord's willing i'll be back (laughs) we'll see y'all we gone